Again, I have a lot of favorite shots. This is probably another one of my favorite shots to do because um, of the slow mo and the teleportation thing I did. This, uh, uh, here, let's, let's play it real quick. So, first of all, you go up here. This, you see a hint of the teleportation effect here, the slow mo teleportation effect that I did, uh, like a, a preview of it, so to speak. And then you get uh, the full taste of it on Herobrine here, which was, it, it looks amazing. And the reason why it looks amazing is because I, um, I, uh, contacted Slamacow, who's a great guy, by the way, guys. If you guys, you know, I don't have to say anything. You guys know who Slamacow is. So Slamacow, um, uh, helped me out on this, uh, uh, on this particular technique or what have you. He didn't teach me how to do it, but he he brought me a tutorial on how to do it, because which was on videocopilot.com, which is a very generic. Um, the tutorial is for a very generic uh, disintegration thing, but you uh, you can adapt it to look like an Ender Pearl, uh, Ender Pearl teleportation thing. And so um, I actually got this from one of his videos. Uh, the, or this particular effect, sorry, uh, from the video Creeper Encounter, where he actually teleports uh, with the Enderman, I think his name is Bart, um, and then he disappears into the void for a while. By the way, Slamacow, if you're watching this, like that, I'm still blown away by how amazing, how pretty that shot was inside of the uh, the void, or uh, is it the, not, I, I'm guessing it's kind of like the void, or it wasn't the end, I don't know, but whatever that was, between t teleportations, like when he was like in the purple stuff, such a pretty shot. It was just so beautiful. Like I just said, yeah, good job. I good job. You blow me away. So um, um, so yeah. So I got this particular shot, uh, this particular effect from him, um, essentially. And then uh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, fun fact: the the purple that is being cast onto the floor was actually done in post. Um, usually I don't do too many like post production effects because I work mostly in Blender. However, for this one, like. Blend, the blender lighting system. I, I didn't want to just have like a blender light going here because it was just it wasn't isolated enough because the blender light just disperses too far in cycles. So um, what I did was I actually just drew a mask for illumination. I could just drew a mask. It's a very stationary shot, so it was really easy to do. Um, I drew a mask uh, where the illumination would be, and then I just uh, duplicated the layer uh, of the same shot essentially, and then um, coated it a little bit more purple than the rest of the shot, and then that mask. Kind of moved along where the teleportation line was, and then it cast essentially a light on where it was supposed to be. And uh, by the way, for the explosion shot, I do have a deleted scene for you guys um, that I'm gonna, I'm gonna here, just put it here. There's an annotation. Look, an annotation to the deleted scene. So the deleted scene was actually um, deleted because of two reasons. Well, first of all, I started out having no explosions because I didn't want to do explosions I was thinking like it's not gonna look very good um, because smoke is still kind of in development like it's gonna to take too long to render really really good smoke and I knew that and which is why I took shortcuts in the first one for the for the resolution but um, uh, I would say that um, my initial res response to have to do a smoke thing was no like I don't want to do it it's so I opted for a black screen and then you know I showed some of my friends for some peer review and stuff like that and some people were like you know I I think um, I think you might need like a shot there, you know, to show exactly what happens and to show that the the epicness of what of the of, of the significance of that. Um, so you know, I gave a shot. Um, I actually ended up rendering out a shot just like that. And actually, in case you guys are curious, uh, it shows specifically how the Endermen get caught in the spider web and how what what, what they were trying to do. And it shows that they were exactly they actually were trying to get away. Um, I don't think the shot looks particularly amazing, so I didn't add it into it. Into, it, didn't have, it didn't have the effect that I wanted it to, so I actually just stayed with the black screen because I thought that was actually better. Um, so I deleted it, but uh, ultimately, that w this is my original intention, but there is a deleted scene out, out there now um, that contains one of my other ideas for the ending. Um, and yeah, and so here you notice he maintains the momentum from his original um, role, which I thought was an important detail. Uh, and yeah, he falls through. Another fun fact, um, in case you guys didn't notice, where he is. Okay, so the cathedral's the cathedral's roof is uh, above the stained glass, right? That's where he lands. And then um, where he falls is not is, is most definitely not in the center of the ceiling, like it is depicted here. But he, it looks so much better when it's in the center of the ceiling. So I made I made the hole be in the center of the roof uh, on the interior shot. But on the exterior shot, I didn't really care where he was on the ceiling, as long as it, you saw him fall down. Um, and then you can bring it into this shot, and nobody would really care, because it's not that big of a deal, and it's still continuous. It's, it still makes sense in your mind. If you can make sense of it in your mind, it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, uh, here, just to let you know, I use volumetric, volumetric, a global volumetric rendering for um, uh, for this particular scene to get that light cast down in cycles, for those of you who know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I, what I did in post, again, was uh, I actually accented the shadow where Haraburn was to make sure it was obvious where he was, excuse me, um, in post, uh, in, in Sony Vegas, but again, drawing a mask and then darkening the brightness a little bit, and then that kind of drew like a shadow there, which uh, still looks very natural, hopefully, um, uh, and it helps accentuate where uh, the positioning of Haraburn. Also, fun fact, if you guys, I don't know if you guys pay attention to this, but this is another kind of like symbolism, artistic shot here that I took some liberties with. Um, but uh, there's a mural in the background, or a stained glass mural in the background, um, with Haraburn, you know, at the top, very similar to the first one. Uh, and then if you look at the bottom, there's zombies on Earth, and there's, you know, of course, zombie pigmen uh, in hell. And then you can kind of see the zombie pigmen are kind of dragging the zombies to hell, <laughs> which is interesting. And the zombies are actually turning to Haraburn for kind of like salvation, right? So this kind of story goes into the idea that, like, oh, hey, you know, um, first of all, I guess the nether and the overworld are separate in terms of who's ruling who, and uh, the zombies are seeking salvation from the nether, um, and therefore look towards Herobrin. Very Not dissimilar to how uh, real-life Christianity works. So um, I thought that was interesting. And then what's also symbolic about this is that if you, you know, just look at the mural and see Herobrin in relation to that, you'll notice that he falls from where he is in the painting down to earth. And that's kind of the idea. He falls he falls from heaven essentially. So right here, he he falls from heaven. And then this particular shot is very similar to the Fallen Kingdom ending shot, I know. And I kinda did that to reminisce uh, first of all to pay homage to it because again, Fallen Kingdom was actually um, one of the main inspirations for the character skin of Herobrine in the first one. Um, I just love the character skin of wearing all black, you know, as Herobrine. And um, he uh, he took that form essentially in the first class, don't bleed. And so I paid homage to Fallen Kingdom in this one just to show like, hey man, thanks for making such an amazing video, and also to show the same exact um, not exact, but the same kind of like downfall feel of the Fallen King of Fallen Kingdom when the king falls uh, off the or jumps off the castle and he kind of gives up, you know, and closes his eyes. Um, this is that's exactly what Herobrine does here. He kind of gives up and closes his eyes. To just kind of like you know let fate take him, so to speak. Similar feeling as the as Fallen Kingdom. And then, oh god, I love the sound effects here. Again, Dan, if you're listening to this, great job on the sound effects. I just I can't get over how um, organic it feels. Um, but yeah, so right here, obviously he's bleeding a lot. Again, just from his head, but that's mostly all you really need to bleed from to show that you're bleeding a lot, um, as animes um, portray it very well. But, um, yeah, notice how the, the lighting and the coloring, the color temperature of these shots at the end are exact, are completely opposite uh, from the rest of the video. And I did that on purpose. So the rest of the video had a bluish tint to it. Um, and that was important because, first of all, it's nighttime. Second of all, it was kind of like dark, mysterious, and reminiscent of the first video, which was also bluish in tint. Now, this particular shot is very yellowish in tint. First of all, it's sunrise, or it's, it's daytime, at the very least. And second of all, it's Harobin has a completely different outlook on life now. That's kind of the idea. So he wakes up and he he doesn't want to be king anymore, and he wants to kind of live a life on his own. He doesn't want the power, and he has a revelation, um, because uh, it's not worth it, bro, man. Like seriously, um, but yeah, no, like uh, so I, I really like that juxtaposition of colors there to signify that um, that change in uh, in mindset. And so obviously he looks at the crown, and yes, that is the crown from the zombie king, zombie king, the first uh, part. And the idea is that he looks at it, he realizes it's not worth it, and he walks away from it, symbolizing, of course. I mean, in real life, yeah, like it's not even his crown. Like he wasn't wearing a crown in the first one, but it symbolizes that he has given up on the throne. He doesn't want the throne anymore, so he walks away and takes up the life of a wanderer. And that whole idea comes from uh, the original lore of Herobrine which I kind of, um, um, you know, uh, wanted to lead into just for, you know, sake of canon, canon canonity, can <laughs> be being in canon. <laughs> um, so basically, the idea is that this is actually the point where he turns from being ruler of the mobs into the wanderer slash ghost that we know of today, which is kind of the idea. So he, he essentially becomes a wanderer. And when Herobrine first came out, you know, when he was first invented, 
he was a wanderer. And so I kind of wanted to tie that story into the story. And so now he becomes a wanderer. This is the moment where he becomes a wanderer that we know him as today. And that's uh, that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, if you guys haven't seen the Gods Don't Bleed 1 commentary, please go check it out. Um, yeah, this is... Uh, you don't need to watch that. Um, I love doing these audio commentaries. And actually, uh, if you guys want to see... I also posted a audio commentary on Ionia, the Blood Moon, which I have not done yet. Um, I'm actually going to do that right after this. But um, I'm, it'll be posted by the time I post this. And I want you guys to check it out. Uh, it's uh, it's a long overdue. It's literally a, a year after I made the video, but I I want you guys to check it out because I have I, while I do have a behind the scenes blog about Ionia, which was a great project to do, I never did an audio commentary. So I want you guys to check it out and watch it. And hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, until next time, uh, check out some the rest of my the stuff on my second channel and stuff on my main channel, and um, subscribe if you like it. I'll see you guys later. All right, see ya.